topic is preparing for the storm, lessons learned from tropical storm Irene on planning for resiliency and local infrastructure. There's that word resiliency that uh, uh, Tony Flint told us uh, actually does resonate with the public, so we hope it resonates with you as well. Uh, I'm Heidi Ritchie uh, with Mass Audubon, a Shaping the Future of Your Community program that provides um, support, technical assistance, and workshops to um, local citizens, trying to encourage them to work with all of you uh, in local planning and land use regulation. And we have three speakers today, uh, Carrie Banks from the Division of Ecological Restoration, uh, Bob Dean, who's with the uh, Franklin County um, Regional, Regional Council of Governments, I'm sorry, That's okay. providing that, and also Selectman in the town of Buckland, which was heavily impacted by Ivy, and uh, Patrick Garner, Patrick Garner uh, Associates, and he's also president of the Massachusetts Association of Conservation Commissions. So um, we're going to start out with Bob talking a little bit about the you know, real life impacts of Irene. Okay. Great. Um, hi. Uh, I get to set the stage a little bit to tell you about what happened in Buckland and then a little bit about uh, some planning efforts across the near River watershed. Um, just to set the stage a little bit about what we experience in, in small towns especially, uh, challenges faced by local officials. Uh, mostly we're talking about volunteer decision makers, select boards, finance committees, zoning boards, uh, planning boards, etc. Uh, et um, there's not enough money to meet local needs. Uh, we're all experienced with cutting budgets at this point, and uh, you know, that's just a, a fact of life. Um, very few, uh, if any, small towns especially have professional planning staff or uh, engineering design staff. And um, local officials often come into the job with little or no training. Um, living proof that you, you don't have to know anything to get elected. <laughs> and uh, emergency repair funding comes often with, uh, with strings attached. They kind of force the hand of the local official to uh, to repair in a certain way. Uh, FEMA will pay 75% to repair to the, the previous condition. Uh, NRCS, that's USDA's National Resource Conservation Service, uh, their emergency watershed protection program is great, but it's, it's focused on specific location that meets the criteria, and you can't have touched that damaged location until they give you approval to, uh, to do some work. And the Mass DOT, oversees the uh, Federal Highway Administration Program and the Emergency Relief Program, and that has its own set of criteria. So this is just a little bit about what we experienced in Buckland. Uh, the photograph is uh, looking at the Iron Bridge in the center of Shelburne Falls. Uh, water was splashing. Uh, and the uh, graph on the right is a, a water flow gauge in the Deerfield River, and you can see how it, it just spikes upward. There was a lot of water. Um, during and after, uh, this is looking up uh, Conway Street toward the center of Shelburne Falls on, on the left. And then what we experienced uh, when we came to, to look at the damage after. This is you know, the same view, and you can see uh, Ann Brower's relocated quilt shop. I don't know some of you saw it. Uh, you can still see it on YouTube, the, the quilt shop floating down Conway Street. Um, and then just some more uh, images of the, the devastation. I, I like the image on the right with the, it has a very strong fire coming. It stood off of that. But we had damage to uh, the road, the, the sidewalks, uh, the sewer line underneath the road, uh, street lights, you know, everything was, was damaged in the storm. Um, in Upper Buckley, Cluster Brook was uh, heavily affected. Uh, the image on the left, uh, it's, a, it's a new path. The, the roadway is actually uh, in the, the left hand side of the photo, the, the brook is normally well off of this picture to the left. And then further upstream, we, we had large chunks of the roadway that just were gone. Uh, this is the old Holly Road Bridge, um, which is now an island. And uh, we saw in many parts of town significant debris loading against culverts, against bridges. Of course, water can go where it normally doesn't go, uh, and, and washing out large areas. Uh, it's estimated to, uh, to cost uh, close to half a million dollars to replace that bridge. Uh, we've made the decision at this point that we don't have that money to, to replace it. Being able to cast it to knock it down, but probably not to replace it. Uh, this is a, another side hill type roadway. Uh, we have a lot of roads in, in our town, probably many towns do, where there, there shouldn't be roads. 
but there are roads. Um, and it's just very difficult to install drainage. And when it gets overwhelmed in a storm like this, this is what occurs. Um, so some of our post IRE challenges. Initial cost estimates, 6.2 million was the, uh, uh, the preliminary damage assessment team estimation. Uh, we had an engineer take a quick look. Uh, he estimated about $30 million worth of damage. Uh, if you factor the 25% the share that the town would have to foot for the bill of repairing, um, that's about $101.5 million. Just to compare that to our current budget, uh, our FY13 non school budget is about $1.7. So it's a, it's a big hit to a small town. Uh, we had many roads that were impassable. Residents were cut off. Uh, we had to get those roads open for emergency vehicles as quickly as we could. Um, and we're trying to make decisions about uh, quick repairs um, with really no good cost information at that time. And then, uh, even though it was a, a you know, relatively warm part of August when this happened, uh, we're about two months away from winter setting in, so you know, we've got that issue to deal with. And how to uh, put the roads in the, the best condition possibly be in for uh, snow removal activities. Um, and here's some of the things that we did or are doing. Uh, we did open roads quickly, um, and a lot of that was uh, you know, dumping gravel and, and getting those roads open. Um, we had our town crew working on it. We got four people uh, with equipment. We had hired two uh, other contracting firms to come in, and then FEMA provided a, a contractor as well. Uh, we did hire an engineering firm to do a, a, an assessment of you know, what, where the damage was and what it might cost to, uh, to bring that back, uh, and also to uh, you know, recommend some fixes. Uh, we briefed our legislators, uh, told them what was happening, making sure that they were aware, uh, and just kind of greasing the wheels, saying we're, we're coming to ask for money at some point. Uh, worked with uh, various emergency response agencies and funding agencies to help us fix these roads. Um, and then we took the heat from our residents who uh, thought we weren't working fast enough. Uh, we have some neighboring towns that did some work quickly, uh, one of them being the town of Holly. Um, we just didn't do it that way. We completed 11 NRCS projects before Christmas, uh, which was very helpful to uh, stabilizing the Pleasant Brook area, and uh, we successfully negotiated the um, Mass DOT Emergency Repair Program. We continue to have struggles working with FEMA. Um, since September, uh, we're on our third project specialist, and uh, at this point, we won't return phone calls or answer emails. So uh, it's, a, it's a very difficult process. We still haven't been able to make final decisions about some of our roadways. So here's uh, just a quick case study of uh, what we faced over the years uh, in a small town. This is an area of customer growth that uh, it has a, an undersized, I think, culvert uh, where the Shepherd Brook comes through, and uh, it's washed out many times in the past. Each time, the only way to get it fixed was with FEMA funding uh, to put it back the way it was before. We were able to slightly increase uh, culvert size in 2000. But it's still an issue. We hired an engineer uh, who suggested, given the town funding uh, restrictions, to just add an overflow pipe. Well, the permitting agencies wouldn't allow that. Uh, if you're going to touch it, you need to do it a full open uh, box culvert. That would have cost about $100,000 that the town didn't have, uh, so consequently, nothing was done. And this is what it looked like after I leave. But we have a, a success story, too. Uh, this is on um, uh, South Street in Buckland. And this is a culvert that washed out in 1999. The whole road washed out. Uh, NRCS came in and uh, designed basically an armored situation, uh, thinking we should just expect that the road is going to overflow again and just armor it so that it can let the water roll over the top and back down. And this is what it looked like after I read. So you know, there are certainly ways to uh, to do it well. <coughs> um, following I read, 
uh, Carolyn Ness from the town of Deerfield um, and many other local officials were wondering, you know, how do we uh, how do we find the help that we need as local officials? So she pulled together uh, a meeting um, of all sorts of people from various agencies, um, the state, nonprofit agencies, to talk about that. And what came out of it was um, a project, and there's a, now a steering committee in place uh, with representation from multiple agencies. And we're trying to look at ways to um, look at the Deerfield River as a, an entire watershed uh, and look at ways that we can plan for uh, fixing areas that need to be fixed for the good of the towns as well as for the good of the rivers. So it's currently called Planning Today to Build Resilient Communities Tomorrow. Uh, we've been told by legislators that that's too long and cumbersome. So uh, we're trying to come up with an acronym. Uh, but my suggestion is GUM or give us money. As I said, we are focusing on planning across town boundaries. So um, you know, we need buy-in from everybody. And we're also looking at networking with other states uh, to build political clout for one thing, to, to try to get some funding for this project. Uh, but the ultimate goal is to help local officials we're making the decisions about what they're doing in their towns to understand the ramifications of those decisions and to, to know where they can go to get help. So, you know, the, the goal is that we reduce future damage, uh, make it more cost effective for towns to, uh, to plan their, their emergency management, and also to benefit the rivers and the streams. And that's me. So, thank you very much. to sort of the, the very real issues that communities face and the challenges in addressing them.